I'm down here, things just look so much different. I'm supposed to be up there, you know. You are pilots of the U.S. Navy. I expect nothing less than perfection. I bow down before the superiority of the opposite sex in many respects. But from time to time, I believe they should bow down before me. Please. Would you like surprises, man? Allow me to introduce the future of digital warfare. And he flies all by himself. You mean itself. It will replace us all. Don't you think they're going to trade us all in for that machine? We have things those computers can never have. Instincts, feelings, moral judgment. What am I supposed to tell all the weeping mothers that we could have got the job done without sacrificing their sons and daughters, but we decided not to? We're putting all of our lives at unnecessary risk. You want to be on the cutting edge? This is it. One to control, we've had a lightning strike. That strike is rewired him somehow. He's aware of himself. What the hell is he doing? It just selected a target. What target? This is a national security crisis. He could kill 50,000 people or more with that loan. He's going to roll. I'm taking fire. Must engage. The situation is critical. If you make me, I will blast you right up the sky. Where are you? I know you're out here. a bit Steve from the old Yorkshire geek and welcome to Magnificent Mondays I'm a bit late I know uh, where I look at um, Magnificent Mondays where I look at uh, you know some of my favourite films so anyway this week we're looking at stealth which is a bit of a um, what's the term um, um, a, a guilty pleasure it's not that good of a film but I do enjoy it I do enjoy it so we're going to look at that uh, let me get rid of that right so Hang on, I'm just uh, housekeeping. <laughs> right. Oh dear. Uh, hello, Windgrace. Uh, Windgrace has been all stealthy. Look, I'm here, but you can't see me because you know stealth. Ah, I think it's John Cena. Can't see me. He's stealthy, isn't he? <laughs> uh, anyway, as I said, I'm running a bit late today. Uh, the reason is I actually forgot. <laughs> I got playing a game on my computer, a game called Firewatch. And um, I got playing that, and it got to like half past seven. And I thought, oh shit, I've got to watch this film before the mid um, appointment with fear. So that's what I've been doing. That's why I'm running late. I know. Very unprofessional of me. Uh, anyway, so Stealth, here we go. Stealth 2005, uh, directed by Rob Cohen, who I think, I don't know if he's a protege of um, Michael Bay, but his films are very Michael Bay ish. Uh, the, uh, written by W.D. Richter, whose name I've seen on other things. Uh, oh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, oh, uh, Buckaroo Banzai. That's the one. He directed that. A co-writing Big Trouble in Little China. I knew I'd seen the name knocking about. Uh, stars Josh Lucas, uh, Jamie Foxx, Jessica Biel, Sam Shepard, Joe Morton, and Richard Roxburgh, and um, the other fella. Um, I thought it was a bloody name already. Um, Wentworth Miller, that fella. Right, so uh, it had a budget of $135 million and it only made about $80 million at the box office. So it was a flop at the time, but I like it. Right, so we'll just get on with the film, shall we? We'll just get on with the film. So I'll make, I'll make that full screen. There we go. And I'll make myself teachy tiny. Uh, as usual, as I always say, we'll not just be watching the film because I get into trouble, copyright and all that. So we'll go through it in a series of stills. I may play the occasional clip, um, but uh, we're just going to go through it and talk about it as we go. So, you know, say what we like about it and maybe some factoids, if I know any. <laughs> and uh, and just have a bit of fun with the films. That's what it is. It's all a bit of fun. 
Right, so off we go. Right, here we go. Start off the good old uh, Columbia Pictures. There we go. Hang on, I'm pressing the wrong button already. There we go. Columbia Pictures. I forgot to mute it. Uh, hang on, it's not in, is it? There we go. What happened then? I did something wrong then, didn't I? Did they make it go off? I pressed a I pressed a key and it made it. Is it is it is it space that uh, removes it? Oh, well, it is. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Sorry, I just found something new. Right, so we're off. Columbia Pictures. There she is, the lovely Columbia lady. Uh, well, I looked up recently, and I've actually forgotten. <laughs> a few episodes ago, I looked it up, didn't I? Who she's based on, and I forgot. Anyway, here we go. The Naval Air Force, the near future. To combat the mounting terror threat of terrorism, a new program has been created. And with the most advanced experimental technology, its purpose is to destroy the enemy wherever they operate in the world. Over 400 pilots applied for the program. And then there's just, just three of them made it, right? Columbia Pictures starts, and here we go. Oh, it zooms in on the word stealth, I think. Here we go, there we go. Stealth. Although there isn't that much stealth in it, to be completely honest. There's a little bit, but um, they never really talk about it, being stealthy, you know, the planes that they're flying. Um, but anyway, never mind. All right, so we're here with the, uh, 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 I think they're called FA-37 Talons. So here we go. Uh, they're on a training mission. Uh, Josh Lucas plays, oh, I can't remember the bloody character names because you know what I'm like. Josh Lucas plays Lieutenant Ben Gannon. Jessica Beale plays Lieutenant Cara Wade. And Jamie Foxx plays Lieutenant Henry Purcell. Right, so we're off. They're on a training, uh, a training mission in their FA-37 Talon hypersonic jet fighters. Um, very uh, Firefoxy, you know. Very, you know, it's like a... Uh, um, the 21st century version of Firefox, which is another great film, by the way, if you haven't seen that. Right, so off they go. They're on the training mission. So they're doing all, all these technical things and saying, you know, fight, fighter piloted stuff. And here they are over the desert and taking out uh, gun emplacements and all that. Um, I think these are supposed to be dummies. They look like real people, don't they? They didn't do anyway, but they're all supposed to be dummies that they're blowing up. Uh, hello, Josh Temple is arrived. There's lots of Joshes in tonight. We even got an actor in the film called Josh. <laughs> I'm surrounded by Joshes. Oh dear. So in the go, doing their uh, fighter piloting stuff, and they're gonna fire some missiles into a cave. Oh, there's a uh, surface wear missile thing that they're gonna blow up, uh, and then a big mini gun that they're gonna blow that up as well. <clears throat> There we go. Boom. Oh, now they've got to fire some missiles, smart missiles or whatever, uh, into this cave where we're going to see... Um, what's that block? It's like a Star Wars, doesn't it? Pew, pew, pew. Um, I'm going to fire this missile. There we go. Into this cave with these dummies in, because as I said, it's a training, a training uh, run. So off they go, and then head back to base. <clears throat> Um, right, so uh, this is where we're meeting the senator that's kind of in charge of the operation, um, and they've cut corners. It seems it's it's kind of not exactly on the books, but um, they're doing their uh, uh, you know uh, backroom shenanigans. So there we go. So that mission was a success. So they're, they're going on to phase two and we find out that phase two is the introduction of a unmanned, what they call it, unmanned combat aerial vehicle or whatever the hell it stands for, uh, into their squad, squadron. Uh, so here we meet the characters. There's Cara Wade, the lovely Jessica Beale, who we do see in a bikini later on. You saw, you saw her in the trailer. Very statuesque. There's Josh Lucas. I don't know. Why Why is everybody in America called Josh? I have no idea. <laughs> and there's Jamie Foxx. Um, is this one of his earliest roles? I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's check. Um, I don't know how many films he'd done before this. Jamie Foxx, where are you? Let's have a look. Let's look you up. Right, Jamie Foxx. Known for... 
Let's go back all the way. See all. Uh, um, yeah, well, no, not 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 his first film, but um, it's 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 there, you know. I suppose I don't know. It's nowhere near his first film. <laughs> Been in loads of stuff before that. Whatever. But he got super famous the year before this film came out because I think he won an Oscar, didn't he, for uh, Ray, I think. But uh, it's best name ever. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> uh... Right. So where were we? Uh, so that's Jamie Foxx. And they're talking about how cool they are and, you know, they're the top guns. They don't say that, but you know, they're essentially that. And now their mission was a complete success. 100 over 100, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they're all cool and they're eating apples. And um, of course, uh, the captain, uh, played by uh, Sam, uh, is it Sam Shepard? I think it's Sam Shepard, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Captain George Cummings there, the CEO. He always likes to have a big bowl of apples on his desk for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so there we go. And uh, lots, lots of these in the film as well. Lots of computer screens with all this sort of like Stargate Atlantis type stuff on. <laughs> it just reminds me of Stargate Atlantis. But uh, anyway, oh, there go. he's black too. He's black. Don't know what they're talking about. Right. So they've been given. Uh, they're going to be sent sent to a carrier because they're naval aviators. So they'll be sent to an aircraft carrier, which turns out to be the Abraham Lincoln. And they're just saying that you'll be joined by a new wingman. So they're all wondering who it's going to be. They're not telling them that it's going to be an unmanned, a drone, essentially. Uh, they're all thinking it's going to be another person. And Jamie Foxx isn't happy about this because he doesn't like even numbers. He likes prime numbers. He says three's a prime number, um, uh, which is obviously a number that can only be divided by one in itself. Um, and he thinks that's lucky because he's superstitious and he thinks four's not a prime number, so it's going to be unlucky for him. It turns out it is. Anyway, so there we go. So that's what he's talking about. There he is talking about there. Unlucky, it's not a prime number, blah, blah, blah. All right, so they get some time off uh, before they go to the carrier. So they hit a bar in wherever they are. Oh, they look at some boobies. And uh, Jamie Foxx uh, always picking up ladies. And there's um, Josh Lucas uh, hitting on a lady, and poor Jessica Biel being the uh, the gooseberry. Why is she picking up some hunky chap? I don't know, because she's not a she's not a tart, is she? <laughs> anyway, so anyway, she's the this. I don't know. I don't know her name. She says, "I've got to go pee pee," and so obviously, um, she says, uh, "Well, at least she's house trained." But there's obviously some chemistry between um, um, I forgot his name already, Ben and Cara. Um, I wonder if she's named after Cara Thrace from Battlestar Galactica. I don't know, probably not. Uh, it's obviously they've got feelings for each other, and you know, by the end of the film, we know that they have. So anyway, but uh, so they're all having a good time and. Um, dancing and all that stuff before you know they've got to go on their um their mission or oh, not mission to their aircraft carrier which we see in here is the uh, uss abraham lincoln in the i presume it's somewhere in the indian ocean or the pacific i don't know they're very loose with the geography in this film <laughs> but uh, anyway here comes the uh the talon fighters coming into land and they look amazing i must i think they look amazing uh I can't tell the difference between this. It's obviously CG and a real plane. We see some real planes taking off. I think the F-18s, I think. But here this comes to land on the on the carrier. I think it looks spot on. I can tell the difference between that and a real plane. Obviously, they're not real planes, but uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. They're a Hornet, uh, F-18 Hornets. We see a couple of those take off as well. Uh, here they go, look. There we go. Day, 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 day. There we go. So, a real plane taking off, and you can't tell the difference between uh, these landing. Look, they're all being all cool and uh, top gunny, and they feel the need, the need for speed, need for stealth. <laughs> and uh, so, here's the, oh, there's the, the right stuff uh, shot uh, in their. Um, 
presume the pressure suits. I don't know. But uh, obviously, Jessica Beals is very bigger hugging, which is not a bad thing. Right. So that um, the, is, is worrying about um, Josh, is not Josh, Ben, is worrying about, you know, this new wingman. Who's it going to be? And then he's coming in now. And uh, here he comes. It's it's Eddie, EDI, Extreme Deep Invader. Why did they call it that? I don't know. But um, here it comes. There's no pilot. It's a, it's a UCAV, an unmanned combat aerial vehicle. What we'd call a drone today. So here we go. And it's apparently got a quantum computer running it. Uh, a learning computer. Um, or as, how would Arnold Schwarzenegger put it? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> in Terminator. A learning machine. Uh, but anyway, so we're to we're told all about it. Pulse detonation engine, which is a pulse detonation wave engine, isn't it? I think that's what they are. Which is what planes like, well, the legendary or mythical Aurora and stuff like that. They're supposed to have those sort of engines out than scramjets and all that. Are, are, there, are there real planes that have those sort of engines yet? Don't know. Ones that we know about. I don't know. So here we are, learning all about it. Uh, so they're dubious now about it, are the pilots. You know, they obviously think, you know, this is going to take our job away. Uh, this is Tim. He's the, uh, sort of like the in charge of uh, Eddie, EDI. Uh, there he is. And um, it says, why is there a seat in it? There's a seat there. And uh, it says it's just for testing and maintenance. But as we see by the end of the film, it does get used. Oh, <clears throat> oh and here's the captain of the ship, uh, Joe Martin. Speaking of Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, it's, um, uh, what's his face? Um, <laughs> Miles, oh, Miles Dyson. I can't remember his middle name. Miles Bennett Dyson. Is it that? Something like that, isn't it? There he is, anyway. Uh, he is Captain Marshfield. Uh, he's the captain of the ship. Obviously, uh, Sam Shepard's character isn't the captain of the ship. He's just in charge of this project, the, the Talons and uh, Eddie. Uh, but they're on uh, Captain Marshfield's ship. Um, so here we go. So um, uh, Jamie Foxx and um, what's her face? Jessica Beale. I've never met the captain, Captain Marshfield, before. Uh, but I think um, Josh Lucas's character, Ben, uh, has. Yeah, I think, you know, he, he, he flew under him, you know, as a younger pilot. He's supposed to be the best three pilots in the world, by the way. Uh, hang on. Uh, so close to being a generations joke if they were set to arrive on Tuesday. Yes, well, maybe so. But no, they've, they've got everything. They haven't got anything missing. <laughs> but uh, anyway... Right, so so they're all happy. Uh, if a bit concerned about you know their jobs being taken away, uh, and here we go, there we go. They're talking about Eddie's humming, and um, um, him. Um, what's, his, what's his character's name? I've bloody forgotten already. Um, <laughs> Cummings, George Cummings, Captain Cummings. Um, it says that Eddie's thinking. He's reading through all their mission profiles and all this stuff, and the data and all that and he hums to himself and we learn he listens to music as well he downloads all the music off the internet and listens to that so anyway so they're getting their data you know they want these he's what is it dcs and tactical database assimilation by 0830 weapon strip and drop ship prep details we'll have eight hours now move it people etc <laughs> so we show we see him in now in their quarters going over the data uh, there's Josh Lucas listening to some music while uh, looking at the info, and it all looks very, um, you know, bullet points. It doesn't look very technical, <laughs> really. Uh, oh, there's um, Jamie Foxx dancing about. There we go, going through his bullet points. And um, we also saw um, Jessica Beale sitting on one of those bouncy ball things doing her. Uh, um, Homework. Right. Boning up. Boning up on Eddie, so to speak. So, there we go. He goes in with uh, Josh goes in. Ben. I keep on, I keep on the actor name. Ben goes in with the. Uh, says, uh, you know, um, 
study break, and uh, she's obviously very untidy. She's got all her underwear hanging out. But uh, as we can see, there's still more um, uh, chemistry between them. She's got all these pictures on the wall. I presume these are like her nephews and nieces, I suppose, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. But we never learn about a family, but maybe this is just something they put there as background. Anyway. Um, so it, it says he's, uh, you know, he does have his concerns. I don't know why. I don't know why he has his concerns, but he just does. Um, obviously, he doesn't want you know, a war being put into the hands of a machine that doesn't have feelings, etc. So there we go. There we go. Study break is over. Right, so... We're going to go out on a, uh, a test flight. But before that, the crew is walking the, the deck uh, looking for, um, you know, de debris or bits and bobs that can get, pardon me, you know, kicked up you know, as the aircraft land or take off or whatever. They don't want that, do they? So they're all doing that, and even the captains do it. Um, but they like stop and have a chat uh, as the rest of the crew carries on. Uh, and then he finds something. So they missed something. And he actually says that. See, you missed something. So I thought, didn't do the job very bloody well then, did they? But uh, anyway. Um, but um, we're learning that Captain Marshfield does have his concerns about this project. And uh, but, um, Captain uh, Cummings, uh, as it says there, your objections were duly noted. So they're, going, they're doing this test cycle from his ship. He's not happy about these planes being on his ship. So and there he's finding uh, something, whatever it was. I don't know, paperclip or something, I don't know. So they're getting ready to take off for this test flight uh, with the three Talons and Eddie. So off they go. Uh, the Talons take off with the is it like a catapult thing in it. They're, they're sprawling them off the ship. So they, they set off. It looks cool. Can't tell the difference between that and a real plane. I can't, anyway. But I do have dodgy eyes. <laughs> looks real to me. So they take off, but then Eddie comes up. Here he is. And uh, he doesn't need a runway. To where he's going, they don't need roads. Although he does in a bit. <laughs> but in this particular instance, is uh, we see that he's a vertical takeoff and landing. Um, plane up he goes. Look, there we go. So he doesn't need a runway, so he takes off and goes and joins the rest of the squadron. Right, so without having fun, he's saying, uh, You know, Eddie, follow my lead because we're told that Eddie's going to learn, he's got to learn, he's been an observer and he's got to learn from uh, Ben, Lieutenant Ben Gannon. And um, so they're going to. Uh, do some test test flight stuff, test manoeuvres and all that while they're out there. Right, but while they're out there having fun, um, there they go, having fun, flying about, um, something happens and they've got to go on a, a real-life mission. He's talking about there. Uh, they've got to go to Rangoon, which is in Myanmar, which, is that, did that used to be Cambodia? I'm going to have to look that up now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh Rangoon. Uh, I don't know. Can't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up. Oh, it used to be Burma. Right, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Right, so they're going there. Uh because they've got some intelligence on like a terrorist leader or whatever and is in this particular place and they can take him out. So that's what they're going to do. So go um hypersonic in a minute, uh, when they get told about this. There you go, they've got an emergency redirect, brand new tasking orders. Um so here we go, we're learning they're going to Rangoon. Out these these bad guys. They're all confirmed, it's all cool, and they're flying close together there, aren't they? <laughs> there we go, they're going supersonic, there they're going to Mac 4, they go to, not as fast as Firefox, which I think could could go to Mac, go to Mac 6, Firefox could go to, I don't know, but uh, they're going at Mac 4, 
Uh, cool, like I said, the wings fold up and uh, there we go, and off the go. Right, so they're heading to uh, Burma. Uh, we're getting the intelligence about the building where the bad guys are in. And we learn it's got a big, massive, like, um, what do they call it? Uh, a bunker buster, not bunker buster. Like a big, it's got like a big, massive concrete roof, uh, like bomb proof, a bomb proof roof. Um, and nothing that they've got on the talons or on Eddie can penetrate it. Uh, so they say, crikey, you know, there you go. We're not weaponized for something that thick, but obviously they're going to do it. Find out a way, and uh, they said, "Well, can we get it from the side? You know, knock the building down from the side." But they said it's in the middle of the city, and there'll be massive collateral casualties. Uh, and there we see the the collateral casualties that would happen if they're just the building over. So they've got to make it go down. You know, in, an implosion because we learned that they've got I forgot the call them these particular bombs. Uh, they're like bunker buster bombs, but they're implosion bombs. I don't know if that's a real thing. I don't know, but they, they make everything fall in on itself. Uh, anyway, so Tin Man, uh, they call him Tin Man, by the way. That's his call sign. They call Eddie, they call him Tin Man. You know, another Star Trek reference. Oh, it was a divorce. Um, he, uh, he hacks into the CIA satellites and stuff and gets all the, the data on these bad guys. That looks a lot like... Um, um, I forgot to put the name now. Uh, they played Jason Voorhees in a few films. I don't think it is him, but... Um, oh, what's his name? I've got his autograph. I've met him. <sighs> It'll come to me. I'm terrible. Terrible I am. Uh so he's, you know, he's, he's Ed, uh, Eddie is identifying uh, all the bad guys, and they're all there. There you go. Very born identity sort of thing. So there we go. But so they've got to find a way to uh, to get through that um, that fourteen foot thick concrete roof. Uh, there's a very small chance we get a Tin Man reference to the new uh, Lower Decks episode. By the way, is there? Oh, no, no. We will see. Not long to wait now. Um, I say, well, I always wonder what happened to Tin Man. Speaking of Star Trek, I always wonder what happened to that that ship and um, the um, um, Betazoid fella, um, Tam Elbrun. What happened to him? See, I remembered that name, didn't I? Um, I was <laughs> what happened to him when they went off, you know, to wherever they were going. We never saw him again. Anyway, so they've got to. Um, They've got to uh, get through this 14-foot thick concrete um, bomb-proof roof. But Eddie's got a plan. He says if you dive down uh, at 2,000 and whatever knots, 2,070 knots, um, it'll give the, the, the bomb enough velocity to get through, to smash through the 14-foot the of concrete. But they all decide, well, the... The captain back on the ship, Captain uh, Cummings, decides um, that you know Eddie should do that because there's a 75% chance if a human pilot tried that manoeuvre, it'd black out, or she, or they would black out. But no, um, Ben says he's going to do it, and he pretends he, his radio's playing up when the captain's ordering him to get Ed, Eddie to do it. Because Eddie's supposed to be just observing, by the way. Um but um, no, um, Ben's going to do it. So he sets off, uh, goes flying up. He goes and then heads back down. And it's, there's this proper velocity at just the right time with about, you know, 100 feet to spare. And uh, releases the bomb and it goes through, smashes through the, the concrete. There we go. Uh, he's flying down now through the streets of Rangoon. <laughs> it's very silly. Uh, and then it, it, it blows up. Four, five, five, four, three, two, one, blah, blah, blah. Boom. It all blows up and collapses in on itself with no cut. And they said there's no collateral casualties. There must be some, you know what I mean? <laughs> there must be some. At least one or two. Anyway. Um, 
uh, Wingress says, the episode is called Empathological Fallacies. I'm vaguely hoping the empath it's refer- referencing is him, but it's unlikely. Well, yeah. <laughs> but like I say, he's not really an empath. He was like a full betazoid, wasn't he? So he was like a full telepath, wasn't he? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's Deanna Troy that's the empath, isn't it? They might be referencing the empath in uh, the original series uh, episode, which got banned, didn't it, in Britain for a while? I don't know why, but it did. I think it's because it showed uh, examples of torture, didn't it? But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Right, so mission accomplished. There we go. Uh, So we're going to flip. See, they mentioned stealth, full stealth egress. So they should be like, Stealthy anyway, shouldn't they? <laughs> but um, anyway, oh, look, he's got his. Uh, oh, where is he? There he is. He's got his um, auto slash gem hadar thing on, anti. Speaking of Star Trek again, um, for him to to to, to see with. <laughs> All right. So, and I think he did actually black out. I think he did actually black out. Did Ben um, when he was like. Pulling back up again. I think it blacked out for a second, and BT has got a nosebleed, but he got the job done. So they're heading back to base, and uh, you know everything's lovely. But they're coming in. There's a big storm now where the um, the Abraham Lincoln is. And, um, Jamie Fox and Jessica Beale land, and it's just Josh and um, Eddie got to land. Then they get struck by lightning. There we go. We've had a lightning strike. Let's show it. We can see it. Oh no, I've missed it. Never mind. They get struck by lightning, both of them. And um, Eddie, uh, yeah, Eddie goes a bit haywire, you know, flying about. So uh, Ben lands his plane and says he'll have to get the uh, the barricades up. Emergency landing plan B. Star Trek again. They get the barricades up um, to catch Eddie. Um, but as we see, he doesn't need it because he just lands the he lands himself. Uh, perfectly fine. Oh, and then we see Jessica Beale looking lovely in the rain. Um, there he is. He just lands. It doesn't even touch the the barricade, or maybe a little bit. Just brushes against it. It's fine. And uh, but obviously, this is the beginning of their problems now because he's been struck by lightning. And we see Tim checking on uh, Eddie. Uh, he's taking Eddie out, actually. We see him there. We go. Eddie's there on the on the desk. That's Eddie. Uh, well, Eddie's brain. Uh, he's giving him a once over, and he shows us uh, Eddie's um, brain waves or whatever. We're going to show it now. This is Eddie's normal brain pattern or whatever, neurological pattern, whatever. There you go. It's supposed to look like that. Old douche to me. Uh, but then he says, um, after the lightning strike, it looks different. Uh, or maybe that's that one where it looks... Di- oh, there you go. Right, that's what it's supposed to look like. Eddie's neural network. But after the strike, uh, it looks all doolally. Just make sure we're still, uh, we're still going. <laughs> Yeah, I'll make sure there's no messages on uh, on Rumble. Uh, me, me live stream yesterday. Uh, somebody sent a message on Rumble. And I didn't realise because I don't check it very often. Uh, I didn't realise till afterwards. But no, they're not. <laughs> uh, right. So he started writing all these different sorts of code now. As Eddie is doing all his own thing. Uh, so basically, he's, he's become sentient, I suppose. And this is where we learn about the fellow that um, designed Eddie's uh, AI is Keith Orbit. And uh, Ben says well, that, that his name, Orbit, but apparently he changed his name. Um, there you go. He did the AI on the Raptor when he was 22, and then he decided his, his given name wasn't was too earthly, so he called himself Orbit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so then Josh, uh, not Josh, Ben asks Tim, um, to go behind the curtain and uh, he asks, um, Tim, there you go, do you have confidence in this plane? And Tim doesn't answer, says, there, there's your answer. So obviously, Ben's got his still worried about uh, about the plane, so he's going to see the uh, Captain Cummings who's playing Scrabble. 
a bit of product placement there. Um, we're saying, uh, you know, it's um, what worries about uh, Eddie, but he's more concerned. He's Captain Cummings about um, uh, Ben's, um, you know, disobeying orders, you know, because he supposed to order Eddie to do the last mission, but he did it himself. But he's, you know, he says, I, I made a decision. Uh, and he, he thinks, um, thinks it needs more testing. And um, obviously the captain doesn't agree. But anyway, so they're going to send them off on the um, of the, the uh, strike, the uh, lightning strike. They're going to, you know, make sure Eddie's fine. So they're going to send them off for a week to uh, to Thailand, of all places. Uh, there you go. We're into a little R&R. So they're going to Thailand. Um, so they're going, you know, I don't think they go for the full week, but they're there for a few days, I suppose. And here we go. Some nice shots of Thailand. There we go. Uh, the Thailand tourist board um, shots. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so then we see Jamie Foxx immediately hitting on a, a young Thai lady walking down these steps. Um and we see, oh, this is the Jessica Beal in a uh, bikini scene, and Josh Lucas showing off his abs. There she is, very statuesque. Oh, uh, dear. Uh, and this is where we learn, you know, we see that there is chemistry, they, you know, they're giving each other longing looks, but, uh, you know, they're not doing anything about it because it's against regulations. Uh, anyway, they're talking about Eddie and um, Jamie Foxx's character. I still forgot his name. Henry something, isn't it? What's his bloody character's name? I keep forgetting. Henry Purcell. Uh, I'll just call him Henry. Uh, Henry's, you know, he's all for he's all for it. You know, he's a tool. He's, you know, to be used. And if 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 Eddie's up there, meaning he's not getting his bum shot off, then um, that's that's good for him. But uh, obviously, uh, Ben uh, does does have his doubts. But they're going to have uh, some fun anyway while they're in Thailand. Uh, and this is where uh, Henry and um, Josh, Ben, are, are talking about, you know, the elephant in the room that he's madly in love with Cara. And he says he is, but he says, you know, it's against regulations and all that. There you go. I love her. But, oh, no. uh, and we learn, Henry says, you know, Cara, she's 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 not just any female pilot. Obviously, these are the three best pilots in the world, so sort of. And um, you know, she's not just any pilot or any female pilot. She's um, she's the poster girl, or she will be the poster girl. You know, if this comes out into the open, you know, it's publicised or whatever, she'll be the poster girl. You know, for the for the navy, and you know, she'll be, you know, she'll rise up through the ranks, and she'll probably end up being an admiral and all that, whatever. When she's quite young, uh, and he says, you know, he'll get in her way. But uh, he says he knows, so they don't, uh, they don't do anything about it. Um, but uh, Henry's fine, because he's got his little tie bit on the side. But they're having a chat. Chemistry again. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be getting through all this so they can finally go. You know, the action will start soon, so we're getting through all the, you know, the feeling stuff. And uh, she kind of hints that she's in love with him as well. There we go. Haven't found anyone that's worth the risk until now. And then he gets that like goes, um, and then they look at each other longingly for a bit. And um, with his with his piercing blue eyes, are they real or oh, the the contact lenses? I've no idea. She can be like Una, ad calum perfertim. I've no idea. I don't speak Latin. <laughs> Sorry, that contributes again to love nothing to the stream. Well, I don't because I don't speak Latin. I'm sure it was in you know Star Trek, but I can't remember. Strange New Worlds. If anybody's wondering, Una is a character in Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Anyway, so he right, says I'm just going to go into town and uh, have fun without her. Uh, he says, manana. Off he goes. And he's a little bit sad because he's leaving her. 
which is a little bit sad because he's left her. But then the pages start beeping. Did they, did they have pages in, in 2005? Or oh, the near future. They just have phones, wouldn't you? So they get called back. Hang on, Win Grace. It's supposed to be to the skies through stealth. All right, I was stealing her ad astra per aspera, but changing it for this film. All right. All right. Let's see. Very good. <laughs> Uh, yes, furtive will be stealth, won't it? Where we get the uh, verb to be furtive or stealthy, I suppose. Very good, I tell you. You're too clever. That's, that's our trouble, lad. <laughs> anyway, so they get called back to the ship and they, they get there really quickly. So they must have been really close to Thailand, but they get there really quickly. Well, I presume they do. So they've got a new mission. Um, there we go. They've got to go to Tajikistan. Uh, we learned that some warlords got some some nuclear weapons that is going to put on some Scud missiles. So they've got to go and take him out. Um, and Josh, Josh, keep on Josh. Ben uh, says, uh, you know, let, let Eddie sit this one out. We'll take care of it. He says, no, it's, you know, uh, EDI is going. Uh, oh, and we learned that Tim's been reassigned. Tim's not there anymore. He's gone. So. Has he been killed? Don't know. Or has he just been sent somewhere? I don't know. But then um, Captain Purcell says, you know, Eddie is the whole idea. And then we see, you know, because he was zooming on Eddie's brain. Obviously heard him. It's like Hal, isn't he? It's supposed to be like Hal. Uh, by the way, voiced by Wentworth Miller, who, who were in uh, Prison Break, wasn't it? And um, Marvel's, um, what do they call them? Um, thing, is, thing is of tomorrow. Uh, what they call it, the heroes of tomorrow, legends of tomorrow. He were in that as well, wasn't he? I think he'd been in Arrow as well. But uh, anyway, so off they go. So they're taking off again. Um, so we see them all take off, and for some reason, Eddie doesn't do his um vertical takeoff this time, he does a, a regular one look, a regular takeoff. So I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, DC, not my way on what. I think it said Marvel. What? I said, um, did they say Marvels? Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I did. I said Marvel's things of tomorrow, didn't I? Yeah, sorry, DC's. Legends of tomorrow, yes. I was thinking of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's what I was thinking of. That's why Marvel popped in me. But he wanted that, I don't think. Anyway, right. Not that anybody cares. Not that anybody cares. Right. So off they go. They're off to Tajikistan. Doing a lot of, uh, you know, um, um, sky hopping, I suppose. You know, what they hopping around the world, all these different places. I said, they're a bit loose with the geography. <laughs> and um, so off they go. No, I don't know. Oh, right, we're looking at a satellite. That's what we're looking at, and we're gonna we're gonna zoom down from the satellite. There we go. We we'll get a nice map to show us where we're going. So there's China there. Tajikistan's in the yellow. See, so surrounded by former Soviet states and Afghanistan and Pakistan and China. Uh, it was also in one of the Resident Evil movies, was it? I can't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, he played um, Albert Wesker, I think, didn't he? Did he? I think. Uh, anyway, right, so we zoom in, there we go, and we see the uh, the castle, the, the walk, because he's the warlord, so he's also got to have a castle, <laughs> they're all sitting there, and there you go, they're bringing in the nuclear warheads, uh, I, oxen, <laughs> obviously, because it's Tajikistan, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and make out is something like backwards place, and it's probably fine, you know. The, the, all these, I mean, all these countries in the world that, um, you know, us in the West, I think are still in the Middle Ages. You probably visit it, and you know, perfectly normal, perfectly up to date. There we are with their scud launchers, but um, anyway, in the planes, here we go. They're, they're arriving, and um, um. Uh, Kara says, um, there's a village nearby. If they take out all these nuclear weapons, it'll rain down a radioactive cloud on these this village nearby. And there's like over a thousand people there, you know, and the 
Not going to do it. So, Ben, there we go. They get the, the missiles ready. Um, so, there we go. They're just saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of people down there. They're just farmers. Because, you know, it's Tajikistan. <coughs> Uh, there we go. Radioactive dust is going to rain all over the place. And there's the village. And we get a little. Oh, no, no, we don't. We'll get through in a minute. So, Ben, as the commander in the field, says, um, uh, Oh, yeah, before that, Henry says, You know, the sensors say that the wind will take the uh, radioactive cloud over Pakistan, which is an, obviously an ally. So, Ben, uh, being the commander in the field, they still get the order to commence the attack from Captain Cummings. Ben, being the commander in the field, doesn't abort and says, uh, no, we're not doing it. We're heading back to base. But Eddie decides he's not going to cooperate. There we go. Tin Man will not abort. He's going to carry on with the mission. And he, he, you know, he's disobeying orders from from Ben. So he sets off. He's going to um, uh, start his attack run. <laughs> um, and then he gets obviously under fire. Uh, so they decide they've got to go and bail him out. Oh, there you go. So we've got to bail it out. So they're going in and they start taking out the gun emplacements uh, while Eddie blows up all you know all the stuff. There you go. Blows up the scud launchers and the nuclear warheads, which must have arrived. They must have been quick oxen dragging them in. Uh, all blows up. They fly away. And there we go. The, the radioactive cloud rains down on the farmers in the village. They're not going to be well. I think I think uh, Cara says, you know, they're going to need relief. They're going to need medical help and all that. There you go. Uh, and then uh, Tin Man, Eddie, says, you know, there you go. Mission achieved, 100 over 100. Very smug. And uh, obviously Ben's not happy. So they're heading back to base, but Eddie says no, selecting other targets. So it's going on, it's going rogue. Or as they would say in um, Jay and Silent Bob, he's gone bandit Reynolds style. <laughs> Whatever that means, I don't know, but it's hilarious. So he's going off. There you go, detaching formation, and he's flying away to do something. Um, he's got lots of missiles and stuff on board that he could do lots of damage with, and he's you know he's not um, not taking command. He switched off his transponder and then he's going full stealth. And that's one of the few few times we hear about the the other word stealth. So they send the others to get him. You know, I want my plane back. So they've got to go and find him. Um, so they're getting they're now we're in Seattle and uh, this is the uh, the home of Keith Orbit played by Richard Roxburgh. Uh, Rich, he's been in a lot of stuff, but what do I know him from? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. Was he in the Hobbit? Was he one of the dwarves in the Hobbit, or is that a different Richard Rock? <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Or did he play Dracula in uh, Van Helsing? I get mixed up with them, you see. I get mixed up with him. Let's have a look where they what's he been in? Yes, Van Helsing. He played Dracula in Van Helsing. Right. Right. So what who, who played um Thorin Oak and Shield? It was some somebody like that, wasn't it? Was that Richard Roxborough? Was that somebody else? It was somebody else because he's not there. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Yes, he played uh, Dracula in Van Helsing. Uh, we're in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen as well, were we? All right. I can't remember. I can't remember. Did he play the baddie in that? Was that Richard? I can't remember. Yeah, it was another film I like that got a paste in, you know, critically, League, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but I really like that film. Anyway. Um, so, Captain Cummings is on the phone to Keith Orbick saying, you know, your plane's gone mental, get it back. There we go. So he's uh, got to see to that. All right, so. Oh, are they heading for Russia? We learn that, um, we learn that Eddie's heading for, uh, oh, we're in Moriarty, we're in Moriarty, all right. I'm going to say that, and I maybe did say it, I can't remember. <laughs> 
Uh, he's heading for somewhere in Russia, is uh, Eddie. Um, it turns out is um, we learn later on that he's accessed like a top secret file called Caviar Sweep, which is like um, like a war game thing. Uh, that's, that's like a war uh, fictional scenarios. Richard Armitage, yes, was Thorin, yes. All these Richards. Excuse me. Uh, Richards are nearly as uh, prevalent as Josh's. <laughs> Oh um, where were we? Uh, caviar sweep. Yes, he's accessed a file called Caviar Sweep, which is like a war games exercise with fictional targets. But he thinks they're real, so he's going to go after one in Russia. Uh, that's what we learn later. But uh, anyway, Henry is the first one that uh, that uh, gets a visual on uh, Eddie. So they say, you know, well, don't lose him. We're on his way. They're like a couple of minutes behind the others. Um, but uh, you know, he's ended up with chasing him. Ooh, the valleys and canyons and stuff. It's all very dramatic looking. But it was good at the cinema. I never saw it at the cinema. But it was good at the cinema. Uh, and it would be for 3D, wasn't it, this? So uh, it'd be nice that a 3D version had been, you know, wild and trippy, wouldn't it? Well, with all that going on, look. Um, so he's trying to talk Eddie down. And there he goes, says, you're the future, and the future's not supposed to act like that. You know, you've got to obey orders. And um, Eddie's... Not having any of it, and looks like he's got a goofy laugh there, doesn't he? <laughs> like lips and googly eyes. Um, Eddie says, There you go. Eddie says, Tell them three, leave me alone. Um, anyway, so he gets he's got an order to uh, take him down. So, there you go. Give oh, there you go. Got permission to uh, take down uh, Eddie, so but, but we learn. Kara says you're too close. He, you know, he gets a wet missile lock on him. Kara says, "Henry, drop back. You're too close." So it's obviously supposed to be one of the best pilots in the world. So it's not that good, is he? Has his missile. Uh, Eddie easily evades it. It blows up on a mountain, and for some reason, <laughs> um, Henry just crashes, crashes his plane for some reason. There we go. Uh, there we go. Don't know why it just does. Uh, it's a cool shot, is this actually? Because he's either pilot, it's not like go forward, and you know, this is the demise of Henry, but uh, say it's very sad. So, Henry's dead. Jamie Foxx is no longer in this film. There we go. So, now uh, Ben and Kara's upset. Ben's angry. You know, they were, they were their friend. Um, he says he didn't kill him later on. He says, you know, it wasn't, I didn't kill him. He made a mistake, pilot error, which is kind of technically true. Anyway. Um, oh, by the way, Cara's plane flew through the explosion of um, Henry's jet and uh, she's got damage, uh, but she doesn't know it yet. So they've got to go and um, go after Eddie. Um, and they realize they know where he's going now because they're running low on fuel. Uh, and there's a, um, I forgot to call it now. There's a, like a big floating fuel depot um, that is going to. I don't know where it is, <laughs> but it's, it's it's in the area. They must have them dotted about all over the world, maybe. I don't know. But here we go. We learn that she's uh, got some damage uh, on her wing, like a starboard wing, one of, one of her wings. And um, oh, the port side says there, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure it's a right wing, though, that comes off. I could be wrong. Anyway. So she's got damage. So she's ordered to uh, head back to the ship. So off she goes. Uh, Black Knight satellite. What about it? What about the Black Knight satellite? I don't know, I don't know why you mentioned that all of a sudden. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. But some people think that were just... Um, uh, what were it? The, the photo of the Black Knight satellite were... Um, um, Something like a um, a blanket, a thermal blanket, wasn't it? That were that came out of you know a spacecraft or whatever. But anyway, um, right. So they're um, there. We go. They're going to refuel. So obviously going to this refueling station. They've sent uh, Kara back to the uh, back to the south southeast. She's got to head. Uh, well, is he? He's heading northeast or whatever. 
Um, all right, so she's going. We're splitting up, so off they go. And um, this is where we're learning that uh, Captain um, Marshfield's not happy, you know, because it's all over the news now that stuff's been going on. You know, the explosion in the building collapsing in Rangoon and, pardon me, an explo you know, the explosion in Tajikistan, oh, pardon me, with a radioactive cloud. And he just says, does uh, Captain Cummings, well, some warlord tripped over his nuclear bomb. You know, we, we had nothing to do with it. So, you know, he's got to, he's got a dead pilot and two of the pilots in danger. Right, so we arrive at this, uh, whatever it is, floating fuel depot. I suppose it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. I don't see why not. Maybe they do have them. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh seems a bit far-fetched. But uh, Eddie comes up to refuel, and it won't let him, because obviously he's been locked out of the system, hasn't he? And it won't uh, let him refuel. There you go, access denied. So he just shoots off. I don't know if this would work, but uh, there you go. He just shoots off the end, you know, for the, 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 the fuel cap. He shoots that off and just sticks his uh, refueling pipe in. Would that work? I don't know. Probably not. But uh, it's sci-fi. So he, uh, so he's refueling that way, his, uh, his uh, Eddie. Um, um, there we go. Oh, see, port winging operative, starboard canards frozen. I've no idea what a canard is. <laughs> I thought it were um, uh, French for duck or something. <laughs> I don't know. So she's, uh, there we go, she's having problems with her plane, with her Firefox. I know it's not. But uh, she's going to have to, uh, she's all over the place and she's going to have to eject soon. And we learn that she's over North Korea, of all places. Like I said, they're all over the place. I mean, she got from, like, Tajikistan to North Korea. And, you know, what about China? China's in between this massive country. But anyway, never mind. So there you go, she ejects out, and then the plane flies, uh, there you go, flies near her for some reason, and then blows up just above her, as though it meant to. <laughs> so she's falling down with flaming debris raining around her. There you go. There's burning debris. What are we saying, uh, Yorkshire? Debris. Everywhere. And, um, She's got to wait to uh, pull a parachute at the last minute because of all the debris. Um, so she pulls a chute, but she still gets hit by flaming debris. There you go. Still gets hit. There you go. And, um, and there you go. <laughs> you see, you get hit there, look. Uh, and then the parachute just burns away. Uh, there it is. This just falls. Looks a long way, but obviously it mustn't be as far as it uh, it looks. Still a long way. How did she survive this? I have no idea. Through the trees, and she's fine. But well, she's fine. She's uh, tangled up, and she cuts herself off or pulls it, whatever. Ends up on the floor. And she's in North Korea now. Apparently, we learned she's twelve miles from the board, from the South Korean board. So she's got to make her way there. Right, Ben arrives at this, uh, whatever it's called. What do they call it? Some like camel or something. I can't remember what they call it. Camel hump or something. I don't know what they call it. Uh, does it say in uh, the description? Just, just bear with me a minute. <laughs> Uh, no, it misses that bit out completely in the description on the you know, the plot description on Wikipedia. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, right, so Josh has arrived. As we see, so this big aircraft, not this big dirigible, I suppose, filled with fuel tanks. It obviously just flies in a big circle, so we can see it's got this big cloud of uh, aviation fuel. Uh, there you go, around it. 
You've got to be careful not to ignite that, haven't they? But Josh goes in, he needs to refuel. Not Josh, Ben. He refuels because he's got permission. Uh, while he's waiting for his, there we go, his tanks to fill up, um, he flies by in Jaws fashion in a minute. I'm going to see it. He says, uh, come on, Eddie, I know you're there. You haven't come too far. You can just see his, his wing like 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 uh, Jaws. <laughs> Bit on the nose, isn't it? I know it was quick, but uh, it's flying about. And uh, there you go. You ordered Henry to kill me, and um, so uh, there you go. That's where he's saying it wasn't his fault. It was pilot error. He was defending himself. Yes, Sky Sharks. <laughs> Wind Grace says. Um, and so Eddie says, you know, I've got work to do or whatever, I'm going and um, he flies off through the, the plume, ignites his afterburners or whatever and ignites this ring, luckily the furthest point from where uh, Ben's refueling is over on this side, but uh, off it goes, you know, in a, a cool visual uh, it just re finishes refueling just in time and detaches just as it all blows up it's that big an explosion we even see it from orbit <laughs> with a sound as well it's all like <laughs> Josh Temple says I like dirigibles I want one seems like it would be a relaxing flight well yeah but um, not one with hydrogen inside like the Hindenburg um and you've got to have your ticket, haven't you? Or Indiana Jones will knock you out and push you out the window. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Right, uh, Keith Orbit learns all about caviar sweep here. He's, he's looking into the, the code that um, um, Eddie's uh, rewriting. I don't know how he's getting into this because he must, then, he must have a link then to Eddie. Um, Eddie you know, Ed, Ed was supposed to switch off his transponder and broken off contact with him. So how is he getting into the code that Eddie's writing? I don't know. Why don't you just send a message? Shut down. I don't know. But uh, anyway. Whatever. Whatever. It's not a Christopher Nolan film. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. This is where he finds out about the uh, caviar sweep. And um, he wants to go and check out all these targets or this target. There's a cold fusion weapons lab in Siberia, which doesn't exist. So Ben's got to uh, get through to him or have, before he can do that. Uh, meanwhile, in North Korea, she's arrived at a stagnant pond by the looks of it. So she starts drinking it immediately. Never mind all the typhoid and all whatever's in there. But uh, she even rubs some of it on her wounds, you know, just to get the germs in there. Next to this little village. Uh, she takes her jacket off and then uh, she gets a gun out. She sees they, they arrive in, so she goes and hides and then she gets uh, a gun out. And it's massive. Why has she got this? Look at it. Why has she got this huge gun? She's a pilot. She had just have like a sidearm or something, you know, something something small, not like a bloody Robocop's gun. <laughs> it's huge. But anyway, she's there. Look at it. But um, this little girl comes across her. She says, oh, everything's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. So the little girl screams and runs off. So she goes running off. Um. Now the bad, the bad in North Koreans are on to her. Uh, by the way, at, at this point, North Korea looks fine, uh, you know, nice and colourful. But when the baddie soldiers arrive, North Korea suddenly goes all uh, washed out and desaturated for some reason. Don't know why. Spoken like a true non-American, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. No such thing as too small of a gun eh? or too big of a gun, whatever. I know what I mean. You can't have too big a gun. Right, so this mysterious senator that's uh, behind the uh, the project, the uh, EDI project, um, is, is telling uh, Captain Cummings there because he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. If they don't sort this out, 
don't know why. Maybe they just cut corners or whatever. I don't. Maybe people have been killed to keep this a secret. I don't know. But um, or maybe it's just because um, you know Eddie's malfunctioning. Is that? Um, I don't know. Does it say? Does it say who that is? <clears throat> I presume it's a senator. Just bear with me. I'm just looking through. Just looking through. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if his name's ever mentioned. I don't know. Maybe it is there somewhere, but I don't know who it is. No, I don't know the name of that character. I don't know. It looks familiar, though. I've seen him in something. I've seen him in something. Is it um, him that were in um, Enterprise that played um, in the E-squared uh, episode you know, with the Enterprise that travelled back in time? Uh, the NXO one travelled back in time. Is, is that him that played the half-Vulcan um, son of Jonathan Archer and T'Pol? Uh, is it not Jonathan Archer? Uh, Trip and T'Pol. Um, is that him? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know his name of the actor. <laughs> and I can't find him in the IMDb <clears throat> list. I don't know what to look for. I don't know the character's name. <sighs> no, I can't see it anywhere. Nothing that says like Senator or whoever he is. I don't know. Or is it somebody in the Pentagon? I don't know. It doesn't look like a military officer, does it? <sighs> oh, Nicholas Hammond's in this as an executive officer. No, that's not Nicholas Hammond, is it? Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Uh... Oh, David, is that, is that, oh, right, am I correct? Have I missed him in this list? David Andrews, where are we? That's him on IMDb. Can't see, oh, there we go. Ray, is that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> is it him? It do, yeah, well, whatever, right. Anyway, so another Star Trek, uh, Another Star Trek reference. Yes, it is him. I can see it is him now. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Right. So what's happening now? Um, well, they're over Russia now. Um, we're also in Terminator 3. Uh, what are they? All right. Can't remember. I can't remember. I've seen him in other stuff as well. But I remember him mostly for that, that episode of uh, Enterprise, which I liked. I liked that episode. I'm not a big fan of time travel -y sort of shenanigans um as a rule i don't hate them but you know i think it's overused but that was a good episode i don't know why they were just pottering about for like what 70 odd years or whatever or 108 i don't know how long it was 100 years we'll say i don't know why they were pottering about for all that time in just that little part of the um delphic expanse but never mind uh where boy uh, right, they're in Russia, so they're going through Russia. Nobody should know they're there. They're supposed to be stealthy, aren't they? You know, they should not be appearing on radar or whatever. Obviously, maybe people on the ground can see them. But if they're super high up, maybe they can't anyway. But anyway, they get... There we go. They get uh, intercepted by... Um... Oh, I forgot. The SU-37s. I don't know anything about planes. I don't know. What does it say? It says here somewhere. I've seen it. Do, do, do. Yes, SU 37s. I don't know. I'd have said MIGs. Are the MIGs? <laughs> That's all I know about Russian planes or Soviet planes. Uh, he was in your Pulaski BBC series. I've never heard of it, but not that Pulaski, so I am less interested. I don't know. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Right, so they're going to get attacked by Russian fighters now. 
Um, and they end up helping each other, sort of. Um, here they are. But I don't know how they're picking them up. They're supposed to be super stealthy, aren't they? But never mind. But anyway, the make short work of these. There we go. Hang on. There you go. Boom. That one blows up. It actually looks, you know, an actual uh, practical explosion. It looks it, doesn't it? It looks like a practical explosion, that, doesn't it? Didn't look CG to me. It looked like they blew up a model. Maybe they did. Uh, oh, there we go. There we learned that. Uh, where is it? Oh, I've seen it somewhere. You said where they were. Over Lake Baikal, which is in Siberia. All over the place. Um, I did a short story, a Tomb Raider short story with Lake Baikal in it. Um, with a UFO in the bottom of Lake Baikal and. Um, Lara Croft to, to go and sort it out. Uh, dear. Anyway, <laughs> that's by the by. Uh, Wingrace says, uh, love this era of effects. I'd say it was a time when, since the 2005, they were still including some like practical effects, weren't they? In, uh, it wasn't all CG. But that, look, that looked practical to me. Might not have been, I don't know. But... Um, Anyway, they're over Lake Baikal, so they're over Siberia somewhere now, and they're still getting attacked by these uh, Su-37s. I presume they've got... They'll, they'll have another name, won't they? Let's have a look, because it's there. A Sukhoi Su-37 doesn't have a, another nickname. They've usually got something else, haven't they? Have a look. Flanker. Uh, pro popularly nicknamed Terminator. All oh, right. Uh, first flight, 1996. Um, they used... Um, I know that's something else, never mind. There we go. So anyway, yes. Uh, 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 Terminator is their uh, nickname. Which we've also mentioned. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there's um, doing uh, some probably physics-defying flight stuff. Uh, this out, shoots it. There we go. That blows up. There we go. Um, and then another one appears out of nowhere. Um, starts getting shot at by another baddie. There you go. Hostile at six o'clock. Uh, we think he's going to take him out, but then Eddie comes and saves him. Oh, by the way, so we see they've got two pilots in, but in this, uh, it says some, I've seen it somewhere. Um, that uh, apparently the SU 37s were single seated fighters, but never mind. <coughs> I wouldn't have known. <laughs> uh, Eddie saves uh, saves Ben, uh, blows up that other plane. There you go, blows up that other plane. Uh, saves Ben. This is right. I'm gonna go off and uh, carry on my mission. Now I've saved your life, uh, but then he's got damage, you know. He's, so he, he makes a mistake then, does Eddie, doesn't he? Because he allows himself to get damaged. And um, there you go, fuel lines ruptured. And there's nothing to put the fire out. So it's going to fly down to uh, 20 feet or whatever, 15 feet, over this lake, Lake Baker, I suppose, which is the world's largest freshwater lake, by the way, um, in terms of volume. Um <clears throat> Um, so he says he's going to do that, and he says, you know, if he doesn't do as what he's, you know, if he doesn't do what uh, Ben orders him to do now, you know, he'll be destroyed. And he won't be able to complete his mission. So he orders him to stand down and all that. And Eddie does the logical thing and says, okay, I'm cancelling all targets. So he's he's back on board. He's a goodie again now. He's Eddie, Tin Man. He's a goodie, but goodie again now. He's talked him talked him round. So there we go. They're going to fly over the lake, and. Um, Ben flies in front of Eddie and fires a missile. There we go, down into the water, and it explodes. And we go, Eddie flies through it, and it puts out his fire. There we go. So everything's lovely. There's a low on fuel, and uh, we've got some damage as well. As um, at Ben, because uh, we saw him get you know shot up a little bit, so he's got some damage. 
so they need a new, they need a redirect. They can't, they can't make it back to the ship. So they're heading to Alaska. And there goes it's the Brooks Range. It's a private airfield that's like got top secret clearance and all that. And I think it's supposed to be like a rendition site or something like that because it's very shady people that are there. But uh, there we go. Private corporation maintains a secure facility. So that's I think it's a rendition site because you see some like torture devices. It's like an electric rack. So I think that's what it's supposed to be. So they head over there. Learned that uh, Eddie's, you know, says, What about the UK? Saying it's back on board, it's back in the program, so to speak. They're heading to Alaska now, so off they go. Oh, and, and there's such a goodie now. Oh, I asked about um, Cara, and um, uh, Captain Cummy said she's on approach. You know, it lies to him. He says it didn't sound, it didn't sound right. And Eddie says, Yes, his voice stress analysis says he's lying or whatever. So he, he, he breaks into the computers and um, tells uh, Eddie tells uh, um, Ben that um, Lieutenant Wade ejected over North Korea and you know, she's somewhere in North Korea, close to the border. So he's going to go and save her. Uh, but they've got to get to Alaska first. So in, meanwhile, in North Korea, uh, right, the, the baddies arrive in the helicopter. It's kind of a bit like Rambo 2 now. Um, uh, oh, it's still quite colourful. Maybe maybe it gets all washed out later because it, maybe it's supposed to be night time or what, I don't know, but it, it looks very bright. But anyway. Uh, the baddies arrive. Here he is, the North Korean officer. Uh, they've, they've got a coat. Remember, she took a coat off earlier. Did car and so they've got a coat and they're giving it to the dogs to smell. So they're, they're on her tail. There she is running away. There we go. She's so she's she's round about here somewhere near the board. Luckily, good job she didn't crash up here, isn't it? Never mind. Uh, then we're in. Um, we're going to hear Gandalf fighting the uh, the Balrog in a minute, aren't we? <laughs> That's what that scenery is like, isn't it? You shall not pass. It's all like echoing at the beginning of uh, Two Towers. Uh, but no, it's just two uh, stealth planes flying by. And I said, Eddie's still got this goofy smile, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm reminded, behind enemy lines, which I really enjoyed as well. I haven't seen that. Is that the one with. Um... Oh, there's, there's two, isn't there? That's the one with uh, Owen Wilson in it, behind enemy lines. Which is the one with um, Meg uh, Meg Ryan? There's another that's similar, isn't there? Um, that's courage. That courage under fire or something. I can't remember. I've not seen either. I've not seen either. I did see a good film uh, the other night though um, on uh, we're on Amazon. I think we're on Amazon Prime. Uh, the Covenant. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Really good film. Speaking of war films and stuff, it's set in Afghanistan. Anyway, right. So, um, right. So they're on the way to Alaska, aren't they? Right. So, I'm still snuffling a bit, aren't I? I'm just about better, but they've uh, got permission to land. Right. So they're going to land at this base. There they are. There's the tower. Coming in and landing, and there we go. They're getting the fire truck ready. And dilly ding, dilly ding. Wonder if they've got a Dalmatian. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, Owen Wills behind enemy lies Meg Ryan is courage under fire with Lou Diamond Phillips. All right, very good. Also, Denzel, I like Lou better only because he's in Stargate Universe. <laughs> anyway, right. Uh, I forgot what I was saying now. Um, oh my, yes, they're landing out there in Alaska. So, um, Ben's plane's done in, he lands it, basically crash lands it like that and uh, gets out and it's you know, his plane's totaled. <clears throat> so the, the, um, Eddie you know, goes into the hangar and um, Keith Orbit arrives in a bit. Um, so I don't know how long he's there for. They must have really, you know, they must have like hypersonic passenger planes as well that get him around. 
But then again, he's only in Seattle, isn't he? So Seattle, how long would it take to get from like Seattle to Alaska? I don't know. Several hours, you'd think, wouldn't you, in a regular plane? But uh, anyway, never mind. So he's in this uh, medical bay thing, and this doctor, who I think looks like Mike from Red Letter Media, <laughs> that salt and peppered his hair up. I think he's Mike, what is it, Stock, Stock Lazar or whatever they call him. Let me see him. He's playing a doctor. and um, But he's not really a doctor. There we go. Just like Mike from Red Letter Media. Um. He's not really a doctor. It, it, it pretends to be. He's checking him out. Or maybe he's really a doctor, but he's going to kill him. Um, oh, sorry. Wind grace. Three to three to four hour flight. All right. So he's, so he's had a few hours then to uh, to sit and ruminate. Um, so he's going to give him, you know, a, a, a shot. And uh, But he says, I don't, I don't need a shot. We don't actually see what... Um, if it shows us what it is, wouldn't make it. I just saw the word serum, but I didn't see what it was. What it picks out. There we go. Don't, don't show us what. Don't tell us what it is. Serum DFL two way. I don't know. It should have a big bloody poison symbol on, shouldn't it? But it's not morphine. There's all the morphine there, and that's some sort of serum. I've no idea, <laughs> but it's deadly. So it's not a very good serum then, is it? If it's deadly. <laughs> and a serum's supposed to save your life. Anyway, so he gives him it. Uh, well, he's gonna try and give him it, and Ben's saying, I don't want I don't want a shot, I don't need a shot, I'm fine, and they end up scuffling. There you go. And the doctor ends up getting the injection. So the Mike from Red Letter Media gets the injection. And uh, he dies. So they were gonna kill, they were gonna kill Ben. Uh, and obviously they failed. Right. Meanwhile, back in you know desaturated North Korea, um, they've spotted her. It says so. He's asked for a sniper rifle, and he shoots. And then we're going to pull back. See her running up this hill, just like Kate Bush, and he gets her in the arm. Look, just there. I bet that hurts. But she's tough. She's tough. Jessica Beale could kick the shit out of any regular person, couldn't you? Any regular man. She's very toned. <laughs> I'm surprised she hasn't become like, you know, like, um, um, what's the face? Scarlett Johansson, you know, in, in, in Marvel and stuff like that. I'm surprised she hasn't become like a superhero. You'd think so, wouldn't you? I know she were in Blade Trinity, wasn't she? But, you know, you'd think she'd been something else, wouldn't you? You don't see a lot of her these days. What was the last thing we've seen her in? I can't think. I can't think what I saw her in last. Uh, she was in a good film called... It came out around the same time as The Prestige. Uh, I think it was called The Illusionist. Um, she was good in that. But anyway, I'm waffling. Oh, there's the torture device. It's a, an electric rack. Of course, her body ends up on that in a bit. As I said, so I think this is a rendition site. Right, Keith Orbit's arrived. Um, Wingo says she was in a lot of TV shows, was she? Oh, I don't know. She should be a huge star, shouldn't she? Well, she is, but, you know, a bigger one. Well, I said she should be in, you know, Marvel or DC with her physique, unless she's let herself go, I don't know. But... Anyway, whatever. Right, so they've got Keith Orbit in. And uh, he's under orders. There we go. He's on the, the phone to Cummings. And Cummings orders him to wipe Eddie's memory, everything, you know, from the before the lightning strike and everything. Uh, wants to, uh, you know, so the, there's no um, no evidence, basically. He's getting rid of all the evidence. There we go. Um, well, that's what he's got to do. That's his orders. Uh, but uh, Ben's got out of the... Um, um, sick bear, so he's trying to work his way around there, and the uh, he gets a fella and grabs his gun. And, um, so Keith Orbit's plugging into Eddie, and, um, and then we learn that Eddie's developed emotions or feelings, he's feeling sorry for what happened to Henry. And sorry for what he did. So he says, so, so you mean you feel? And he says, I feel sorry. Um, there you go. And 
Um, so he doesn't want to erase his memory now. Meanwhile, we have a bit of shadow fighting. Psh, takes somebody out with a ice pick, ice axe or whatever. Gets his gun. Uh, goes into the hangar. Goes to put the weapons down. Obviously, there's a bit of a shootout. And, uh, he hasn't erased Eddie's memory, by the way. Um, where he learns that Keith Orbit's there. Checking out all the bad guys. One of them ended up on the electric thing. Uh, hang on. Uh, Jessica Biel feels like she was replaced by Adrian Pelicki. Oh, all right. I know Adrian Pelicki were in that uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, they did a pilot, didn't they? Which apparently were terrible. Uh, is that what she means? Because I can imagine Jessica Biel as Wonder Woman. But Adrian Pelicki, what else has she been in? I know she's been in Supernatural. I know she's been in um, all, The Orville. But uh, apart from that, I don't know what else she's been in. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put Eddie back together again. And um, obviously, he's not had his memory erased because um, he's going to go in and save Kara. Um, don't know how he plans to do it. <laughs> They're going to go in and fly it out because there's only one seat in the plane, but I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my, yes, she was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., was not she? Yes, she was. Yes, yes, she was. Uh, yes, and the Orvel. I mentioned the Orvel. Did I? I'm sure I did. Um, right, so they're putting Eddie back together. Uh, you know, the bad guys are uh, assembling. There we go. So he's uh, getting ready to, to fly out. Um, he's telling us all the other stuff that she's been in. G.I. <laughs> Joe, Legion. I didn't like that Legion. People rave about it. I saw the first episode. I thought, oh, crap. SWAT, Red Dawn. What's she in that? That was presumably the remake. Uh, which G.I. Joe? I don't know. There's two G.I. Joe films, isn't there? There's Rise of Cobra and Retaliation, isn't there? Like I don't know. Uh, another first one had um, Rachel Nichols in. Ooh. Anyway, give up. I'm being a perv now. Right, so there's a big shootout. He's in Eddie. Uh, Eddie shoots his way out of the hangar. There we go. Big explosions. And uh, what's out the bad guys or some of them? Flying out. Uh, Keith Orbit steals a car or gets a car from somewhere and he comes driving out. But this baddie is shooting at him. Look. So Ben fires a missile. There we go. Boom, goes round the corner. Like proper. Wow, boom, straight around that corner, wasn't it? Defying the uh, laws of physics. Legion, the movie. Oh, not the show, the movie. Um, was that the one with the angels? The uh, baddies. Uh, which were quite good. The Paul Bettany in it. In that, that's the one in that Legion, isn't it? Was she in that? Oh, I don't remember. Anyway. So, off he goes. He's going now to North Korea to save uh, Kara. There we go. Um, well, find out that um, Eddie's um, uh, stealth mode is not working because of his damage. Um, so, they've got to fly under the radar, which is at 50, the 15 feet is the radar floor. This is where we can do that. Uh, so he gets on the blower to Captain, um, um, I forgot his name now again, Marsh something, Marsh whatever, Marshmallow. <laughs> I forgot. I've forgotten. What's his name? Where are we? Marshfield, that's it, Captain Marshfield. Miles Bennett Dyson. Uh, gets on the blower to him and tells him all about what uh, Captain Cummings has been up to and that they were just going to try and kill him and all that. And... Um, and um, so we know that Captain Cummings is uh, being up to no good. So meanwhile, back in North Korea, they're still after her. But she's hiding in this uh, little cutout that's just the right size. But if, because of the look, they might see a boob sticking out. But she's going to shoot at him anyway with her eyes closed. <laughs> going, ah! She's a pilot, isn't she? She's a pilot, not a shooter. <laughs> but she still hates him. Even though she won't look in. Um, meanwhile, on Sky News, I presume it, no, it is. I'm going to say, I presume it's Sky News Australia, but yes, it is because it's a big 
what do you think of Australia there? Um, this is where we're learning about the, ex the the public now knows about what's going on in Rangoon and Tajikistan and all that. Um, so it's out um, that something's up. Um, and he's ordered to return to the ship. And, uh, but he says, no, because he's got to go and save his wingman, Kara. So that's what he's going to do. So off he goes, North Korea, bombing over rice paddies, over rice paddies, ruining these poor people's houses. They haven't done anything wrong, have they? They won't have insurance to pay for that, will they? Not in North Korea, they won't. Anyway, the state will pay for their house to be repaired. I doubt it very much. Um, right, so they're on the way now to arrest uh, Captain Cummings with his big bowl of apples. And, um, you know, we know what you've been doing, blah, blah, blah. You're under arrest. Um, it's going to just have a minute. Says, yeah, okay. Oh, he's going to blow his brains out. <laughs> so off he goes into his little restroom and um, have one last last word with uh, the senator or whoever he is. And uh, shoots himself. He's a warrior, not a politician. So he's out of the picture now. He's taking the easy way out. Meanwhile, Carr has arrived in the demilitarised zone or whatever the hell it's called. See, the, the, the North Korean... Part aboard. Um, so she's arrived there and see her and start shooting at her. There we go. In more water. She's going to have tons of diseases. Yeah, they see her and they start shooting at her. Um, no. um, oh, she shoots back at him and does quite well. I presume she kept her eyes open this time. Uh, but she's, you know, the shooting and shooting, you know, she's, she's no escape. She's run out of bullets. Uh, the dog's coming at her. They've set the dogs on her, or a dog. <laughs> Just as the dog is about to get her, there's a big explosion over there. Look, hey. Dog runs away. <laughs> Can't kill a dog, can they? Um, so then all the uh, North Korean soldiers appear from the trees, and they start shooting at, uh, at Eddie, Eddie and Ben. Oh, here we go. Need to take out the tree line. They've got one missile left, uh, says Eddie. This is the last missile. So they fire it. And uh, this one last missile just does that. Just blows up all that. Look, it's there and blows up all that over there as well. Must have been a fuel dump as well. <laughs> I don't know. It was a cool, big, practical explosion, anyway. Cool. What the lads want in it? Explosions. Or is it explosions? So, she's saved for now. Um, she um, the, as he lands the plane. Is he going to try and squeeze her in? I've no idea. But he gets out of the plane. Uh, but then we see that the bad. Hang on, press the wrong button. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, we see him. Hang on, where, there he is. He's, he's aiming with his sniper rifle. Remember, he's a really good shot. And uh, he's aiming at Josh, and then he aims at uh, Kara. Um, but then Josh gets him with a, I don't know, it's a grenade or something. Uh, there you go. Ships him, and then just goes into the barbed wire or razor wire, whatever it is. And that's it. You know, an ignominious end for that bad guy. Why didn't he blow him up? I mean, if it were Rambo, he'd have had some explosive tick arrows or something and blown him, just leaving his boots behind, wouldn't they? Not just throw him into a razor wire fence. And that's it. That's the end of him. Boo boring. Didn't blow him up. But anyway, so she's safe for now. But they've got to get to the. Uh, you know, the, the South Korean border now, but another the, the oh God, another North Korean helicopter's arrived. Don't ask me what sort of helicopter that is. Is it a North Korean? Is, is it a Russian helicopter? I have no idea. Does it say in the description? Uh, MI, oh yeah, it must be. 
Uh, yes, an M uh, Mill Me 8 um, twin turbine helicopter designed by the Soviet Union in the 1960s. So there you go. So it is. Yes, it is. I don't, I don't know about helicopters either. I know Westlands and Sikorskis. <laughs> That's all I know about helicopters. Oh, and Gazelles and Airwolf and Blue Thunder. <laughs> Hey, did you want it to build a cannon out of sulfur and bamboo? Well, something like that, yeah. They should have done something, shouldn't they? <laughs> oh, if you fired a grenade, why didn't, why didn't his grenade just blow him up? Instead of just throwing him into the fence. It were rubbish. <sighs> should have landed in his mouth. He should have gone, ah, and the grenade landed in his mouth and blew his head off. <laughs> I should make films. <laughs> anyway, they're all being all lovey, you know, embracing because they love each other. But um, this uh, helicopter's bearing down on them. So Eddie takes off. Just starts, seems to start firing randomly for some reason. There you go, he's, he's shooting at uh, that helicopter. And Eddie starts shooting. Here he goes, look, the helicopter shooting him, and oh no, Eddie's going to die. So, he says, goodbye, does Eddie. And, uh, flies into the helicopter, there he goes. Boom. Just blow up, just big ex an explosion that's exactly the same size <laughs> as the helicopter and um, Eddie. Um it looks like a big explosion, you know, a practical explosion above ground. I think you can just make out wires and stuff. I bet they had it, you know, some explosives hanging from cranes and stuff. I bet that's what they did. Uh, uh, Wenger, uh, I don't know. Uh, only Wenger I know is Arsene Wenger, who used to manage Arsenal, but never mind. What quip would be made as he eats a grenade? God knows. <laughs> well, It'd have to be slightly racist, wouldn't it? Because, you know, it's in North Korea, which is near China. Um, so he'd have to say chow down on that. <laughs> and then his head blows up. Um, but never mind. <clears throat> right, big ex another big explosion. So they've got to get across the border now. Like, still blowing up. Maybe, maybe it's not over with him. I can't actually remember. See, I, I think I was distracted. I think my son would talking to me and stuff like that when this one I couldn't pause it because we're running out of time um, so maybe he's not dead maybe he's not dead I can't remember anyway so they get through the fence and they're heading through across the demilitarized zone to the South Korean part hang on oh maybe oh again <laughs> oh his body had disappeared he's just looking back No, no, I think that's it. I think they've done it. I had a bit of a um, Mandela effect. I thought I'd, I'd seen a bit where they're running across to the South Korean border and the South Korean guards see him. I just thought I'd seen that in version of this. Unless I'm thinking of another film. Let me check. Come on. There we go. We're going to have to play it. We're not getting a copyright strike. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Oh, I just check, make sure that nobody's chatting in um, Rumble. Hello, Rumble. And uh, nobody's saying anything in Twitch, obviously. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Uh, yeah, so they, they get through. And I think that's it then. Oh, yeah, it is. That's it. There we go. Maybe an extended edition. I don't know. I don't know. I don't... I don't think it did out on this. this is, I don't know if this is an extended edition. Or maybe there is one. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. And maybe I'm just, as I said, thinking of other films that had similar um, parts. Um, am I thinking of... Um, oh, what is it now? Is it one of the Bad Boys films? Is it Bad Boys 2? Where they're, <laughs> they're heading for... Um, like, like Cuba or something. I don't know. I can't remember. Don't know. Anyway, so we're back on the uh, Abraham Lincoln. There we go, and they're having a uh, a service there for for uh, for Henry, um, and it's all very solemn on the flight deck. There we go. They're all saluting him, 
Uh, there she is, tearing her eye. And, uh, and they're having a, a chat now. Uh, in their whites. And um, where they profess their love for each other, sort of. Have a do, but they sort of do. And then her final line is uh, that. <laughs> And that's the last line of the film, because they just smile. Don't kiss at anything. Because the soldiers, and there we go, that's the end of the film, directed by Rob Cohen, um, who also did Triple um, X, didn't he? I don't know what else he's done. What else has he done? Uh, what else has he done? Rob Cohen. Come on, where are you? Did he do that um, Mummy 3? Was that, that one of his? Um, we did Fast and Furious. Oh, Dragon Heart, he did that. I didn't know that was Rob Cohen. Uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Uh, oh, he did Triple X 2 as well. I presume somebody else did that. <laughs> what else? Uh, Night Rider 2010. Bird on a Wire. God, did quite a lot, actually. Oh, no, that's producing credits. Where's directing credits? Director. There we go. Oh, and then she was. No, I've just got rid of it, haven't I? Oh, God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Get out of it. Go back. Because I'm stupid. Rob Cohen. Right. On the, no, info, as a director. To, how do we do it? How do we get rid of this? Does it set down? Oh, I've got director. <laughs> wait, wait. <sighs> Yes, Mummy the Tomb of the Dragon Emperor did that as well. Uh, stealth, uh, Beyond Reanimator. Oh, I didn't know he did that. Uh, Triple X, Fast and Furious. Daylight, Dragon Heart. Uh, and some TV stuff. There we go. But uh, he hasn't done anything since 2018, according to this, as a director. The Hurricane Heist in 2018 was his last thing. Uh, Alex Cross. That rings a bell. Have I seen that? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. Thinking of something else. Anyway. Who do they think they are? Sam and Jack, yes. Being in love, but not being able to show it. Anyway, that's the end of the film, and we get cool music and visuals over the end credits and um is there a, a thing at the end i don't think there is is there shows uh eddie's still alive actually them is there i think there might be actually let's have a look yeah yeah see yes <laughs> i didn't watch this bit but it's just popped in my head now there's a bit where it shows eddie i think eddie's still around uh, in the wreckage, come on, show us. Show us. Here in the in the wreckage. There's Eddie's brain, and he's going to light up, isn't it? Hey, so Eddie's still alive. Not he's going to do like, but <laughs> to rebuild himself. It's going to be like a transformer, or or like um. Oh, what's that film? Um. Oh, I can't remember now. I got a film on the way the robot that rebuilt itself. Um oh, can't remember. Never mind. Anyway, there we go. That's the end of the film. Whatever. <laughs> oh, dear. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, not the best film ever made. A bit goofy in places. But the effects are good. And it's got lots of explosions. And it's got Jessica Beale in the bikini, which is what we want. Sorry, just is. So there we go. Right. And it's got Josh Lucas and Jamie Foxx for the ladies. We get Jessica Beale. It's a, a decent exchange, isn't it? <laughs> right. We'll leave it there. Is that what the sequels are going to be called? S2 Alf. ST2 Alf. It's like that new Expendables film, isn't it? Expendables 4. It's Expend. What is it? Expend for bulls, isn't it? <laughs> the four in the middle. Expend for bulls. 
Yeah, stealth two. I'm surprised they haven't done a stealth two, to be honest. But uh, I'll have to write it. Somehow Eddie rebuilt himself and went rampaging through North Korea. Took out um, Kim Jong Un, Il, whichever. I don't know which we're on. Um, but never mind. Right, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. So, uh, thanks, Win Grace, uh, for all your information. You have more information than me <laughs> in these films. Uh, and Josh Temple, uh, thanks for joining in. All the Joshes. All the Joshes, even in the film. I bet Jamie Foxx's real name's Josh. I bet it is. Uh, oh, sorry, hang on. Include the Black Knight satellite, please. You're obsessed with the Black Knight satellite. <laughs> Be cool if it were real, though, wouldn't it? An alien, or maybe an ancient Earth civilization satellite that's been in orbit for, is it 14,000 years or something? Something like that. But anyway, it'd be cool, would that? Right, we'll leave it there. So, as I said, thanks for watching. Uh, what's next? Uh, what day are we on? Monday, Wednesday, I've got my live news stream. Um, uh, Friday, uh, appointment with Thea. This week is. Uh, House of the Devil, really cool film by Ty West. I'm a bit of a Ty West fan. Oh, I'm snotting still. That's Friday. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, we've got um, Ahsoka, haven't we? Episode 7 coming up on, well, Tuesday for you, isn't it? Tuesday in America, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning for us in the UK. Um, what else? And then later on, uh, I think Thursday, there's uh, Lower Decks in the Star Trek Lower Decks. So I'll be doing one of my flash reviews of that. Um, so there we go. But oh, check out Wind Grace's channel. Um, because he has some cool reviews, he'll have his cool review of um, uh, Star Trek Lower Decks on, on Thursday or thereabouts. So check out his channel. And uh, I don't know, do you have a channel, Josh? I don't know. Uh, if he does, check it out. I don't know if he does. <laughs> but right, we'll leave it there. I'm waffling. Right, so thanks for watching, wherever you are. Look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.